Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to be covering lesson 14 and 15 from Accounts Payable Module from Sage 300, the 2021 edition that we're using. So uh, as you're already working in the Accounts Payable Module, now in this lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to cover up the last two chapters that we have left, which is lesson 14, focus on the payment entries and then lesson 15 which focused on the priority processing and then going through some of the transactions that need to be processed printing some of the reports and then also going to look at the bank reconciliation as well at the end of lesson 15. and uh, to do to start with this chapter and you guys already know this uh, to start new chapter you either have to have a file that has completed everything up to lesson 13 if you have your own file, you can use that. If not, you can go into your Blackboard and you can download the file that is right here, which is the end of lesson 13. So we are going to be downloading the file, which is end of lesson 13. And once we have downloaded the file, it's already there. I'm going to delete the other one that I have. And once this is here, uh, you can relocate the file wherever you want that to be. I will. I'm going to be using the download folder because this is just a temporary file, but you will put it into the USB or the C drive, wherever you're putting it in. So here you will unzip the file. And once your file is unzipped, now you need to do a database load. I know this is a normal process and I'm sure you guys all know this, but I need to do that. So I'd rather get that recorded as well. So we're going to go to database load and enter the password now i need to load the files so i'm going to relocate the file which is sitting on the download folder so this has to be unzipped otherwise you won't see this so it's here this and now i'm going to link this with my database file which is omnidat Now I'm going to do the same thing with OmniSys. Once this is done, I press next. And I need to do press next again. And click finish. It's giving me that message, my database is not empty. I know that because there was a file that, was, that I was working on. But if this was an empty file, so you won't get that message. Now I have done the database load. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the Sage. I already launched the Sage 300 on my computer. So I'm going to select the only electronic and select the session date as February 28, 2023. Press OK. And it's detecting an error because the file that I have and the version that I have on this uh, running on this PC, they don't match. So that's why I'm saying you need to activate the accounts payable. So we will go here, data activation, and proceed. And then click on the accounts payable and activate. Once it's activated, it will have all the information that you have done in the previous chapter. They will be all completed, but if you want to check it, you can go into accounts payable. I will quickly go check my vendor list and I should see all my vendors in here. If I see that, that means all the information is there. Okay. Now if you want to check the AP transactions, because this tra uh, this chapter has comp has chapter 12 and 13 completed. So if I go into the invites list, invites batch listing, it will have all the transactions from chapter 12 completed. So they are all there. And then if I go into the adjustment batches, it will have my adjustment entries that we did in lesson 13, they're there as well. Now what we're doing in lesson 14 is we focus on the payment module. So in this module, there are two types of transactions that we will cover. One, if you're doing a manual payment, and uh, that will be a payment entry using a payment batch listing. Then later on, we are also going to go through a process where you can generate a payment batch by putting a command saying that you want to run a payment for all the outstanding invoices from a particular date range 
or you can put the selection criteria as you want to make a payment for anything that's due on a specific date or have the discount applicable on uh, on a particular date of range we will run that batch it will pick up all the entries and that we call this batch entry so there's two ways to record payments one you can record it manually or you can tell the system to run a batch based on your due dates and the discount date okay so we're going to cover both of them okay and then you need to know both of them as well because i could be asking you mix of both where i ask you to record a certain payments uh, so when i say certain payments I mean i'll identify to make a payment for a certain vendor for certain invoices then you record that through a manual payment batches okay and then if i tell you to create a batch based on a certain criteria then we go through that second option where you tell the system to generate a batch for you and you give a command okay so that's something that we'll cover in the second part of uh, chapter 14. the first part that we have is a manual payment similar to what we used to do in chapter 12 and 13 we are uh, to record transactions we need to go into the payment batches so now we are recording payments so for recording payments you need to go into payment batch listing so if i go into a payment batch listing what i see is i see the batch list there is one batch that's already there but it's not posted we were going to post that at the end of chapter 12 once we finish so in lesson 14 uh, this was a prepayment batch that we did in lesson 12 i think and that's not posted but it was only recorded now we wanted to record more payments and now to record a payment obviously you need a batch so we're going to click new and when we click new it's going to create a batch and here i'm going to call this february 2023 payments and then we have the date for the payment batch which is february 28th now here we identify the type of payments so now when you're doing a manual payment you have to wait for me to tell you what payments you're making okay so you're not guessing what payments you are going to be waiting for me to tell you which payments you are going to be recording so before i get into the payment i wanted to show you guys the transaction type that you have in a payment batch so you have four different types of payments that you can do if i tell you to make a payment for an outstanding invoice you will select the option which is a payment option so the payment option is used to record payment for an outstanding invoice that's already recorded in your system then you have a second option which is a prepayment so the prepayment is applicable if you're making a payment in advance okay so i told you that we wanted to place an order for a certain product or for certain services but the uh, the vendor requires you to make a payment without an invoice so that one you get recorded as a prepayment then you have a third option which is apply document so apply document is applicable if you have a credit that's already sitting in your system and you want to apply that credit towards an outstanding invoice then you use apply document the last option we have is a miscellaneous payment if you're making a cash payment where there is no invoice that you have in the system, you have a rent that you're paying to a landlord. So there's no invoice. All you're going to do is record a miscellaneous payment and the miscellaneous payment is you debit the expenses, you credit the bank account. So in that case, you don't need to create an invoice. All you do is go into miscellaneous payment, enter the invoice number if you have it, and then record a GL that you wanted to post the transaction if there's GST or HST applicable, you select that account as well, and the entry will be done by a system, which will be debit to the expense account or whatever the debit account that you selected, and then it's going to be crediting your bank account. No accounts pay will be involved, but we record that payment in the accounts pay module because it is a check that you're paying to a vendor. Okay, so if I tell you to record a payment that's by check without an outstanding invoice, that's going to be considered as a miscellaneous payment if you recall your sage 50 course you used to do make other payment so miscellaneous payment is very similar to what is it was in sage 50 which is miscellaneous payment oh sorry uh are paying other expenses 
So now I'm going to illustrate some of the examples. Again, I'm not going to go through the chapter 14 itself. Uh, there are certain transactions that you need to do. So you guys can do that on your own. I'm going to give some examples and we'll run through those examples to make sure we practice at least, if not four, at least three, three of these transaction type. The first transaction type that I'm going to go through is we have a Cramden 2 vendor and you ask to record a payment issue a check to Cramden Tools for invoice number 3692 and 3928. And if there's any discount available, we want to take that discount and apply it before we make a payment. So if I tell you that this is a payment that you're making for an outstanding invoice, so you're going to select the option as a payment, then I'm going to tell you the date saying this payment was check that you're issuing is on February 20th. So we select the option February 20th. Here I can just say Camden Tools, name of the vendor. And then now I'm going to select the vendor. So system need to know which invoice, but for the system to give you that option, you need to have the vendor selected first. Then the payment code, if it's check, you select as a check. And I have told you that we don't want this to be clicked. We want to uncheck it and manually write down the check number. So in this example, we are going to be entering the check number as okay, and we'll just make up a check number is 101. And here reference number, if you want, you can enter the reference number. Most likely the reference number is your check number. So we leave the reference number as 101. Now what we have to do is we need to know which invoices are outstanding. You see there is a select mode. The so select mode tells you to uh, click or check mark the invoices that you want to pay. But you don't see any invoices outstanding here. But for you to see those outstanding invoices, you have to click on this arrow right here and then it will identify a pick of the invoices that are outstanding for that vendor. So now you see that there are three invoices that get picked up. And I told you that we're making a payment for the invoice number 1605. That's the invoice. And then you see there is a discount available. So we want to give this, we can take the discount. So we enter that discount as well. And for the discount to be entered, we have to make sure we change the apply amount because obviously if you put the apply amount, you won't able to take the discount. So we have to do this. And now you see that you put the discount taken. And now you see the payment net outstanding is 15.72. Then you enter the 15.72.90 right here. So that way the amount will get to zero. Okay. So you always have to do that that way. Otherwise it won't work. So here again, now we also making a payment for 3692 invoice as well. So we again say yes here. And I'm going to remove the amount so that way I can apply the discount first. 0.25. Now after the discount, the amount outstanding is 196. 1.25. Okay. Now we have taken the discount that was available. Okay. So that's how you can apply the discount. Okay. Usually what happens is students try to enter the discount taken, but you won't able to. The reason is that whenever you say yes, it will automatically apply the full amount as an out, as a payment that you're making. But if you don't want to change and use the discount, you have to remove the applied discount and enter that manually by saying 1605 minus 32 and enter it. I always like to do it other way around. I will make this zero and then put the discount taken and it will show you after a discount take on how much money is outstanding. Then I take that amount and I put that in my apply amount. Once that part is done, you go in and you see there's one outstanding invoice that's we're not making a payment for that. We're only making payment for this. And then the system automatically adds these amounts and say this is the total amount of, of uh, payment that you may making to this vendor on this particular check. Once you finish, what you do is you click Add. Okay, it's just giving you a warning that the remit location doesn't match. That's fine. We can skip the error. 
Now, once that is done, now its system will take you to a entry number two in the same batch. Now, entry number two, what we're going to do is we're going to record a prepayment for a cram, not for Cramden, for Kingsway Transit. So, Kingsway Transit wants you to make a payment of two thousand dollar against the PO number one zero one zero. And now, because it's a prepayment. You have to change the payment transaction type to a prepayment as well. And now you see that as soon as you change the prepayment, the bottom information disappeared because it knows that it's not gonna be getting applied against an invoice. So you already removed that information. So now what you have to enter here is you have to enter the information as when does this payment made? The payment was made on February 28th. Then you go in and select the vendor and then the vendor is going to be a so we are selecting the vendor which is cam kingsway transit right here and then if you want you can enter the information you can say prepayment and then you come in you enter the amount of prepayment 2000 now you see this is apply by document. If you already have an invoice that's in the system and you're applying it, you can have a document number. But when you're recording a prepayment, 99% of the chance is that that document doesn't exist. So what we will do is we change that to a PO number. And if the company that you're working for has a PO module, which is the purchase order module, then you should able to click on the finder and apply that against the purchase order. But in this course, we don't have a purchase order module. So what we're going to do is we're just going to enter the PO number 1010. And the activation date is February 20, 2023. So that means if there is a payment that will be applying affected this particular date. And that's the only information that you have to enter. Once this is done, you click add. Now your prepayment has been recorded as well. So now what we're going to do is in the next transaction, we're going to practice using an apply document. So the apply document, as I mentioned earlier, is used when you are, you have a credit that exists in your system already and you want to apply that against an outstanding invoice. It could be a credit note, it could be a prepayment that you made against a PO. Now you don't want to order that particular item that you put the prepayment for. Now because you made a payment, you can apply that payment against any outstanding invoice. So you cancel the order and you call the vendor that you're going to be using that particular credit or a prepayment against a particular invoice that's outstanding. In that case, what would you do is you identify which credit note or a prepayment that you're using. Once you identify that, then you look into it, the outstanding invoice that you want to apply against. So there are two documents that we need to identify. So in this example, what we're going to do is we have a vendor called West Metal Product. And there was a credit note that was issued back in chapter 12, the credit note 5263. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply that credit against an outstanding invoice, which is Z55268 that we have in the system. Okay. Now for these things to work, the credit note and the invoice that you wanted to use should already be posted in the system. Okay. We already have posted those transactions from chapter 12. So that means it should be there. Now for me to apply the prepayment, I will go in and select the transaction type to be apply document. And now here I can say that applying, applying credit note. And now the doc transaction type is going to be apply document. And the effective date will leave uh, as February 20th as well because we're recording all those transactions on that particular date. Now we need to find the vendor. The vendor is West Metal, which is this one right here. Now remember I told you that you need to have two documents. 
first you identify the document which is a credit note or your prepayment that you wanted to apply so for that you click on this browser and then over here it will show you the credit note or prepayment that you have in the system that's not applied anywhere before so we have this credit note CR5263 I click select and it says the unapplied amount this is the amount that we paid or we have a credit for that we can use now I want to use this credit against outstanding invoice now I want to see which outstanding invoice exists so I click on this arrow again and then I see these two outstanding invoices so I told the vendor that I'm going to use this credit against this invoice to Z55268. All I'm going to do is I'm going to say yes right here. And then from here, it will apply the $210 and will show you the not net outstanding amount, which is 22816.40. Now, once this is done, we are done. The journal and I mean, we done the transaction and then we click add. So this is how you will make make a make a transaction with the apply document. So typically there is no cash involved. All we're doing is taking a credit, which is debiting prepayment account and putting that into a accounts payable account. Now we're gonna practice one more transaction, which is a miscellaneous payment. So as I mentioned earlier, the miscellaneous payments are used when you're doing a cash purchase. You went to a particular store and you like certain products that you wanted to buy. You issued a check right away and picked up the product and then you brought those products in the in the warehouse or in the in, in your office. Okay. In that case, when you receive uh, a, a document from your manager, it was the the check copy of the check with the purchase invoice. So technically, you don't have to do two transactions, which is doing an invoice and then making a payment. You can record that with one transaction instead of saying debit expenses credit accounts payable then doing a second entry which is debit accounts payable credit bank account what we can do is we can simply record that as a miscellaneous payment let's assume that we went in and we saw the vendor and his name was john and we liked the product and then we paid a thousand dollar plus hsd for those items that we wanted to buy and then when we purchase it, we paid it paid by check and and that was it. So now to record that transaction, we go through the same process. But the difference is that the payment type is going to be instead of payment, it will be miscellaneous payment. So we select the miscellaneous payment then because this is a one time vendor. So whenever you have a cash purchase, you don't need to add that vendor into your vendor profile because it's a one time vendor. There's no point of adding the vendor profile. All you can do is you can just put the vendor name right here. You cannot do that here because for the vendor number to be, to be fine, you have to have a vendor profile in the system. But if you're doing a one time vendor, all you can do is just put the name of that vendor right here. Let's say it was John Fresco. And here we say print check, and then here we'll put the check number 102. Okay, it was 104 actually. We need to go back, and I think I may have not checked, unchecked this print check. We're gonna go back and make sure we uncheck them. Other, otherwise you will have an issue in uh, in posting the transactions so now the next part is you enter the reference number so reference number represent what did you buy you can enter the invoice number you can put the description of the product that you purchased you can do whatever you want to do you can enter that information right here then if you have the invoice number you can enter the invoice number let's say we have invoice number 2152 we enter that then over here, you need to identify the tax because in the previous chapter, the tax was separate because the taxes are calculated based on the customer profile and then you change it. But now you have to identify the taxes on the very first page. So you click on this browser, you see all the tax classes that you have saved. And this one, we paid the HST, which is Ontario. So we select the Ontario and then 
we come right here at the bottom and now we need to identify which GL account are we going to use for this particular transaction. So what we did was we bought office supplies from this vendor. Okay, the bought an office supplies for $1,000 plus HST. Now we have two options. We can look at the distribution code to see if we have a distribution code for office supplies for the 100 department, or we can identify and pick up that GL account for office expenses for 100 department. Either or is okay. I will start because most of the common practice in, in a big company, medium to large size companies, they don't want the, the accounts to be able to look at the GL. They wanted to have them look through the codes and pick the code that's relevant for their transaction. So we have a Office 100 distribution code. We select that and then see the account automatically get picked up. And the amount that we're using is $1,000. We put the 1,000 and the Ontario HST was already set up at 30%. So it calculate the taxes to be 130. Okay, so now if you think about this journal entry because we're making a payment by check and we're making a payment for office expenses. So the entry will be debit the office expenses, debit your HST account and credit your bank account. Now, once that's finished, you click add. And that's how you will do your accounts payable transactions. So now if you were given more transactions, you just read through the transaction, identify what transaction type it is, select a particular vendor, select the invoice. If it's discount available, you apply it. If you're not, if you're not taking a discount or the discount is not available, you make a full payment. Okay. And if I tell you that you're making a partial payment, all you need to do is change the amount from apply amount and change it to whatever the payment method is or the payment amount is. So these were the type of transactions. So we actually covered each type, different types of transaction from payment module. When you complete chapter 14, you will have various transactions and they will be one of these transactions, right? So once you're finished, you can all, you can simply close the batch, okay? Once you close the batch, you will see that there are four entries in this batch. Now you have the option to print and post. So you don't have an option just to post. It's always print and post. The reason says print and post by chance, if you have any checks that you need to be printed, it will print and then it will post the batch. Okay. So that is a reason for them to have a print and post. So in this batch, I purposely left the two, uh, checks check mark so that way it's going to ask you that we want to print these checks and i'll say yes it will show me a screen which may look weird because we don't have a printer set up for uh, printing checks from the system so all you need to do is once it shows that screen and it's going to ask you said did did the checks got printed correctly you're going to say yes and then it will let you post the batch now for you to post the batch, let's say we done with all the transactions for the month of February. First, you can change this ready to post from no to yes. See here in the second one it says you must print the checks from batch two setting ready to post. So you have to print the checks before you click ready to post to yes. So here I'm going to do is click print actually it's not going to be print here so you are going to go inside the batch and over here so you have entry one entry two see here there's a print check so you have to print check and then it's going to say print the checks we're going to say print See here, that's why let's try picking any. It's asking me that I have to select the, uh, the form where I want the check to be printed. So I'm just going to select the very first one. Then it's going to say you want to print. I'm just going to cancel it. I don't want that to go on the printer. And I'm going to do click close. Okay. Let's try it again. Okay, so in this case, uh, what I did, I instead of going inside, I clicked on print and post. 
let's try this I don't want the okay you know what I can do because we have not changed the print destination it's going directly to my printer so I'm going to go into print destination change those things that we usually do so I recommend when you start a chapter you just go into print destination change that to preview let's go back here and let's try clicking print and post and you see that it's still going to give me that same message now I'm gonna say okay click so over here just pick any report file and then click print and now when I click print it's gonna show me all the checks that it's going to print it will it's on my other screen so I cannot show you guys that but it, it just simply look like a blank page with different lines I'm simply going to click close click on the close icon at the top I just click on this icon on my second page and then it gave me a message were all the checks printed successfully I'm gonna say yes now see here saying batch is not set to ready mode Do you wanna post this batch we're gonna say yes and then it will simply post the batch okay so it will do his steps that it need to be done so it printed the checks after the checks the print is ask you to change this from right to post from no to yes and then once it changed to yes then it posted the batch now we do the same thing with the second batch as well so we can say post and then your second batch is posted so now if you look at the sequence this has a sequence number one this has a sequence number two so but both of them are posted so if I ask you to print me a posting journal you can go to the same place where you always go to AP transaction report go into a posting journal now in this case you don't printing invoices you're printing payment and then here sequence one to four and click on print previously posted and click print and here is your batch list that will have those payments from those two batches and then you can export it or you can print it to a printer so that's one way of recording transactions in a payment module the second type of transaction that I want to show you guys is to create payment batch so in this batch I really like this feature that we have in this in this software where the system allows you to print transactions without you identifying which transactions that you wanted to make usually when the company companies are big enough they don't have a time to identify which invoices they wanted to pay they strictly go with the policy that any invoices that are due we wanted to make a payment for it okay so they are very strict with their policy okay well the, all the invoices need to be paid in 30 days 60 days or 90 days whatever their policy is and they, they will tell the accounts payable to close all the invoices once they are closed then they will go in and run the payment batch so for the payment batch to run you must have a selection code that is set up so first of all before you run into get into a payment batch so if I click on create payment batch the very first thing is going to ask you is to select the selection code when I click on this browser and I don't see anything here the first thing that we have to do is we have to create a selection code now to create a selection code we go into AP setup and look at payment selection code right here so you double click on it and we're gonna create a selection code now the selection code can be different types if you have wanted to create a separate selection code for your accounts payable for Canadian vendor you can create selection code and call this Canadian and then you want to create another selection code that's for US vendor you can identify that as US okay and if you have a separate bank account and you have a separate group of accounts and then you want to say okay well I want to create one selection code that's focused on for electrical department you can do that then you create another selection code for machinery department so that's entirely up to the company how they want the selection code to be created now for us to practice this what we are going to do is we're only going to create one selection code and we're going to use that for all accounts payable so here the selection code I'm going to call this is all and here I'm going to say is all vendors okay and the very first thing that it's going to ask you is for this code to work 
it need to know from which bank account this payment are going to be made. We have two bank accounts, but we use TD checking to make all the payment vendors, payment to the vendor. So we leave that as TD checking. And say select vendors with the bank code only. So if you have a certain vendor that are not use this bank code, they won't pick those vendors. Okay. So, but again, that's not applicable for this situations, but, but if you have companies that has Canadian and US vendor and you, when you set up the payment, you select a different bank accounts, it will pick up only vendors that has this particular bank. But then for that to work, you have to make sure this is check mark. Then come to the criteria because in this example, what we're going to do is we're going to tell the system and give a criteria and then it's going to use that criteria to create a payment batch for you. So here there are different types of selection codes that we have. We can select the selection code by a due date, by discount date or due date or discount date. So you can have a selection code based on whatever criteria you want to use. I want to use both due date and discount date. Right. Then if you want to specify a particular vendor, so in this case, we are leaving for all the vendors. So we don't want to do anything here. But if you're saying that I only want to use for Canadian, then you will only select the Canadian vendor group and then it will only run that for Canadian vendors. So in this case, we don't limit that. This is for all the vendors. So we're going to leave that everything as default. Now we have exclusion as well. So if you said there, there's a particular vendor that are uh, that is an exception. You don't want to make a payment. You need a certain person's approval to make a payment for that. You can what you can do is you can make that vendor as an exclusion. So when you system will run or look for the invoices that need to be paid, it will exclude the vendor that is on this on this list. Okay. This could happen, for example, if you have a certain purchase order that's pending and the vendor is not fulfilling that order or the quality was not good and you're waiting for a refund, but the vendor uh, is creating an issue, then you are being asked by your, your manager to not make any payment for that uh, vendor. So you don't want the system to run a, a check and then it ended up getting paid. So for that reason, you can have that vendor excluded in this selection. And then whenever the accounts payable run the checks, it will not pick up any invoices for that particular vendor. In this case, we'll skip that and we don't want to have any exclusion. And now what we'll do is we click add. So now we created a selection code. Now, once the selection code is done, now we are, we, we will be using the AB transaction to run payment batch. Now I'm going to tell you guys why this uh, feature is very useful. Think about it. You recorded four transactions in the last batch. So if you if we assume that you have 50 invoices every week, if you have 50 invoices and you are making payment to the vendor based on net 30 days, so every month you most likely will be making a payment to 50 vendors as well because your vendors are rotating every week, you're getting invoices from them. Therefore, you have to make a payment for any invoices that are due this week, which probably be any invoices that you received four weeks ago. So to run a batch with 50 invoices, you may need three to four hours just to create payments for all those invoices. First, you print up the vendor age, you identify the invoices and you go in, select the invoice for every vendor. If it's not three hours, it definitely needs you at least two hours. But if it's an automatic process, all you're doing is just picking the payment, picking the invoice and just recording a payment, a system can do that. All you have to tell the system is pick up any invoices that has the due date February 28th. Or we tell the system to pick up the invoices that are due on 28th or it has any discounts available from February 21 to 28th. So you pick up all those invoices and create a batch for you with all those invoices that you wanted to make payment for. Now, how do we use that feature? We double click on create payment batch. Once you go in, first thing that we're going to do is identify the selection code, which is the one that we created all. And now see it's using the criteria. So it first thing is going to ask you is when do you want the batch to be created? It just picks up the session date February 28. That's fine. The most important thing is the criteria. 
So now for this batch, payment batch to run, you need to tell them which invoices you want to pick. I'm going to say any invoices that are due on or before February 28th, pick them up. And any invoices that has a discount available from February 21, no February 20th because we not discount will not be applicable because we are doing this on February 28th. I say from February 28th to March 5th, any invoices that has discount available, pick them as well. And then you say pay all the selected invoices. So that means any invoices that meet these criteria will get picked up. And exclusion, so remember if you add an exclusion, it will show up here. And if you want to remove it, you can remove that as well. We don't click on the option field. Now at the bottom here, you see three different things. Register, generate, and clear. Register means it's going to tell you using this criteria, which invoices are going to be get picked up. Okay. And it will tell you these are the invoices. Are you okay for them to make payment for? Once you say yes, then you click generate. Okay, so that report that you get on registered, I call this pre-check registered. So pre-check registered report means that these are the checks that will be printed if you click generate. Okay, once you click generate, it's gonna use those invoices and create a batch for you with the payment. All right, so, and then you have the last one which is clear. If you say, okay, this, you made a mistake on this uh, criteria, you can click clear and then it will clear everything and then you have to reselect it again to register another batch. So let's say I'm gonna use this criteria, I'm gonna click the registered. Once I click registered, it's looking at my vendor age report, picking up the invoices that are due, and then here it is, okay. It says that the Office Depot has these three invoices that are due on these particular dates and these are the net amount. And for insurance company, these are the two invoices with these amount of standing and this is the amount and that's the payment that's gonna be made. Bell, Kingsway, Transit, so looked at all the vendors and that's all. So the total at the end is 33,787. You printed this report Okay, and I call this report a pre-check register. Okay, so if I ask you to print a pre-check register report, you print this. Okay, so here this is a report, but again, when you showed this report to the manager and the manager told you this West Meta product, this invoice number 2681, we don't wanna make a payment for this. Why? Because we have an issue with this vendor and and we have time for 90 days to pay this invoice okay so what he told you to do is put a hold on this invoice until further notice okay now there's two ways i can put a hold one i can go into the exclusion part and exclude that vendor now the manager didn't tell you to exclude the vendor the manager said don't pay for this particular payment or the particular invoice okay so what does that mean means you are going to be doing a control payment. So the control payment is used for two reasons. One, to force a payment. That means if the payment is not due, but you want it, your manager told you to make a payment, you can select the vendor and the invoice and then select the option to force. Or you can use this control payment to put a hold on this particular invoice. So here what we're doing is we're putting a hold on this invoice. So to do that, we go into a control payments. And then over here, we select the vendor that we want to control the payment for. So here is the list of your vendors. And we select the West Metal. Then you're also going to select the document number. So there are two documents. And the one that we're putting a control is the 268. See, we selected the vendor. And now there are four different, there's one payment. And now for you to see the amount, you have to click on this arrow. It shows you that this invoice is 22,816. That's the outstanding amount. You see the status here is normal. If I ask you to change the status to be forced, that means I want you to make a payment for this. Doesn't matter if it's due or not. I want you to make a payment for it. Then you change the status to be forced. 
if I ask you to make a hold on this particular invoice, that you don't want to make a payment, I want you to hold the invoice until further notice, then you change this to on hold. Now for the system to process this information, you have to click this process. You click process, now the processing completed and you close it. Now this has been saved and now you close that. Now you have done it. Now what you're going to do is you're going to do the same thing, create payment batch. And because you have not cleared all the information that you have is already there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click registered again. So now when I click registered again, it will do the same thing, but will skip that particular invoice from West Meadow. So now if you look at this report, everything else remains same. The only change is that you don't see the West Meadow at the bottom because that is on hold. Okay. So that's how you put the hold on the invoice and the same way you also do a force. And then when you do a force, you make sure that on this report, that invoice that you put a force on will show up here. Once done, you print it or export it, okay, depending on what you need to do. And once done, you close it. Now, I said generate a batch because this is just registered. You have not created a batch. Now you're going to tell the system to generate a batch. Now it generated a batch. See how quickly it created a batch? It created a batch number three is generated for all the outstanding invoices that you see in the in your registered report. Now you close it. Now you close it. Now we need to post that batch because it's only generated. It's not posted. So now to post it, you go into payment batch list. And then you go right here, you see a payment batch. And then you click print and post. And the same thing is going to happen. It's going to say, oh, do you need to print a check? Do you want to print it? We're going to say, yes, print the checks. And then again, it will show up this report like this. All you're going to do is just click close and then close another page that you have. And then it's going to say, are you, is all the checks got printed correctly? We're going to say yes. Now it's going to change and post the batch. And now batch number three has been posted. Then we close it. Now, if I ask you to print a posting journal, you go to the same place as well. Now I have two options. I can either ask you to print me a posting journal, or I will simply ask you to print me a checkbook. Okay. I'm going to say, print me a check registered report. People usually get confused between pre-check registered report and a check registered report. Pre-check register report is the one that we were looking at when we click generate. The check register report is the report that shows up after you posted the transaction. So it tells you which transactions are posted and where those transactions are. Okay, and it will give you a list of all the checks that were printed from the system with the vendor name, with the amount that was paid, with the invoices that were paid. Now, where do I find that report? You find that report under AP transactions and then we have a report called check register. So when you click on this check register, it's gonna ask you, do you wanna print the check register for all the batches? You're gonna say, yes, print me everything from batch number one, supposing so it equals one to three. Say print your summary, if you want, you can. If I don't say it, then don't. So if I don't say it, you're just gonna click print. And then you'll get a report that will have a list of the vendors, the amount that were paid, the check number that was used to make a payment. Okay, this is what I will check. If you don't see that amount correctly anywhere, that means obviously you did something wrong. And this is where I will cross check that you all the entries that you did was done correctly. Okay, once that is done, you print it or export it depending on what you're doing with that report. And then you close it and then you also Close this. So this is what's important from lesson 14. So I recommend all of you guys to make sure you complete lesson 14 by yourself. Again, this was a demonstration of some transactions from chapter 14. So what I will recommend all of you to do is take the end of lesson 13 from the from the blackboard and complete all the transaction, all the exercises that were given in lesson 14. 
practice as many transactions that, that you can and then after that you will go into lesson 15 okay so you if you are doing that lesson 15 in parts i recommend you to create a backup or database dump of this file and then close it then re, re, and then come back or complete the lesson 15 but if you want to do it together because lesson 15 probably will need 15 to 20 minutes not one hour to two hours because there's not much transactions in lesson 15. so if you can do that together i recommend you that i recommend all of you to do it together so now what's in lesson 15. so lesson 15 is a constable periodic processing so the periodic processing is focused on some of the transactions that you do right here create gl batches we don't do that because we tell the system to create batches as you post them. So we don't need to worry about that. If you need to clear history, you can do that here. Um, we're not gonna do that because we're still doing monthly. We're not doing the year end closing. And then these are the year end stuff as well, which are not part of this uh, course. The only thing that we'll be doing is creating recurring batches. So, we have talked about the recurring batches or recurring transactions at the very beginning of the accounts payable module where you're given a certain transaction that are hap that are going to happening that are happening on a monthly basis what you have done in the ap transactions or ap setup we record those transactions not ap trans setup it was under let's go back here AP vendor, nope, AP transactions. Thought it was under the AP. This one is recurring transactions, AP vendor, recurring payable. So if you are given a transaction that is gonna happen on a periodic basis, you will save that entry as a recurring payable. So that's something that you would have done that already in lesson 12, or oh, sorry, lesson uh, I think 11 or 10, where you created a recurring payable, okay? You can add the recurring payables as it comes along. You put up a start date, put up an end date, put the GL account, put the amounts, everything is already entered in a recurring payable. Now AP periodic processing is mostly focused on a month end process. What do you need to do on a month end? On a month end, you want to make sure that all the batches that you have, they're posted and they're also posted in all the all the AP transactions such as invoices, adjustment and and as well as your uh, payment batches. So all of them are posted. There's no open batches. Now you come in, do an AP periodic processing and tell the system to create recurring payable batches. So this is a simple process. If I ask you to create a recurring batch, all you're going to do is just double click on it and it's gonna ask you, say, do you wanna create a recurring batch? And what date? Obviously, we are doing it on a month end, so it's February 28th. And then we leave this as a, as default. We want all the recurring batches to be picked up. All we're going to do is click process. So again, it's two step pro three step process. First, you tell the system to run a recurring batch. Now it has been created in batch number six and one invoice is created. You close it, you close it here. Now the second step is to post a recurring transaction. So now where do I find that transaction? You go under AP transaction, invoice batch list. And then you see batch number six right here. Now when we create this recurring payable, we only enter the account. We didn't enter the amount, right? So if we know the amount, you can enter the amount as well. But we know that we buy office supplies. So what we did, we just created the recurring payable and then somebody will tell you how much is the amount and you can put the amount, let's say we bought an office supplies for $500 and then we enter that, the taxes automatically picked up, Ontario, and the total is 565, save it. Oh, because we did not enter the total. Total is 1130, okay. I know I was rushing to get this done. So everything has to go through the process. So you enter this, the invoice date, the document date, the document number is just picked up by itself and then put the document total that's important so you know this is again this is incorrect because i was thinking i had five one thousand plus hst but it's 500 plus hst so the total is 
565. See, it says undistributed amount. So even if I miss this now, when I click save, it will still give me a warning. So I change this to 565. Now undistributed amount is zero. I double check that here as well. And now click save. Once you save it, now you go right to post and post. Okay, so if there's a recurring transaction you need to do, first step is run the recurring batch. From here, after that, you go into a batch, find the batch, look at that transaction. If there's anything that needs to be changed, you change it. And third step is post that batch. And then the last step, if you are asked you to print, you print the posting journal. So that was an important piece from lesson 15. The other information that you have on this chapter, you guys can go through that, but the only thing that I would recommend you to make sure you know it is printing some of the reports. So once you finish the month and you want to make sure you go into the AP vendor reports and print up the any of the vendors that you want to print. The main reports that I always like you to print is your check register report. You know how to print these ones. If I ask you to print any posting journal, which is usually you do it when you're recording transactions, you should know that one. And then the other report that I may ask you to do is aged payable. So this is very sim similar to what we do is the aging report from Sage 50 is the aging is aged payable. So you click on that and then identify the due date as of what day you want to print. You click print then print up all the invoices that you have. Okay, so now here it shows me all the invoices that are outstanding and you save that report. Okay, this is one report I'm definitely going to ask you. The other report that I already talked with you guys is a check register. So if I ask you to print the check register, you come here and print them. Okay, and always make sure guys, this is a very common thing that I see in the exam. If I ask a pre-check register report, this is not that pre-check register. The pre-check register is always when you're running a payment batch, you click registered, that is the pre-check register report. So make sure you print that because you cannot print that after. Okay, so I think that's all. Now there's one part that that is in lesson 15, but we don't cover that, but I definitely wanted to show you guys. So if you recall that we were looking at the bank reconciliation back in lesson nine, and uh, we were just clearing the transactions. So I wanna show you guys now, when you post these transactions into the AP, these transactions are getting posted, in, not getting posted, the batches are getting created in your batch list. So if you go in here, you see all those batches, they're open, they're all coming from AP sub ledger, okay? You have to post these ones I already told you the only ones that you delete was the opening batches, which was already deleted. So everything else you need to be posted. Now, when do you post it? You usually post it once everything is done in accounts payable. You go in, you post them here, okay? Now you wait for my instruction in the test and I'll tell you to post all the batches or delete or post the batch, appropriate batches in the GL. Then you come in and, and post the batches that need to be posted and delete the batches that need to be deleted. The other thing that I want to show you guys is a bank reconciliation. And we're not going to do the bank reconciliation, but I want to show you guys, if you go into the bank transactions and reconcile statement, if I go in here, select the bank and I'm going to select the date as February 28th and I'll select the date February 28th here as well, go into the reconciliation. You see that all the transactions that we recorded in the accounts table, they all show up here. Now, what do you do at the end of the month is you match these transactions with your bank account and change the status from outstanding to clear or whatever you want to do, right? If there is a transaction that got reverse, you re click on reverse and reverse that transaction, right? So you reconcile this. So if it's the same one person doing everything after you finish the accounts table, you come in, look at the bank statement and click these transaction change from outstanding to reconcile, okay? So we don't do that here, but that's something that you can do. There's a tab there for quick clearing. If you know that all the transaction you already matched with the bank statement, they already did. Instead of going into individual line, you can just click quick clear and all of them from change from the outstanding to clear. 
So this is not something that I'm going to be asking you in the test, but it is an important thing. And once you click clear, you go through the same process that, that you did in the bank module. So this wraps up your chapter 15, lesson 15. So after you completed all this, you're done all the, all the chapters that you required to do from accounts paper. So when you come to the class next week, I want to make sure that all of you guys are well prepared for accounts payable. And then if there's any question that you have from anywhere from lesson 10 to 15, it is important you bring those questions to the class. We're going to meet next week. And next week, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on understanding and making sure that any questions that have any doubts that you have, we clarify that. And then I'll give you guys some other exercises that you will do on your own to prepare you guys for your test number two. Okay. So the things that you should be doing for this week is completing lesson 14 and 15. If you have not done lesson 10, 11, 12 as well, you want to do all of them lesson 12, 10 all the way to 15. Once you complete that, you want to challenge yourself. What you can do is you can go on a blackboard, take up the challenge exercise end of lesson nine, has everything complete up to end of lesson nine. And then you do everything from lesson 10 challenge exercise. You do a constable setup, you create all the vendor profiles, you record the opening entry for AP, and then you record transactions from lesson 12 to 15. So you complete all the challenge exercise from lesson 10 all the way to 15. And that's a very good exercise. If you can do that on your own, and either you do it in one sitting or you do into the part of the sittings you complete, AP setup in one sitting and then create a database dump and then start AP transactions, which is 12, 13, 14 and do that. That will be really helpful and it will help you to build that confidence that you know your accounts paper module. So this is the end of the lecture, everyone. Now it's entirely up to you when you want to complete this. But before you come to the next class, I want to make sure that you have completed all the chapter from lesson 10 to 15. Thank you, everyone. Have yourself a great week. And if you need to reach out, always send me a course message. And I'll, and if there's any question that you want to speak to me in person, take a screenshot or make a note of that and then bring it to the next class. Take care, everyone, and have yourself a great week. Bye-bye.